Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Hacks programming language. Why are we talking about the Hacks programming language? Well, they just hit a pretty significant milestone. The 4.0 version of Hacks was just released uh, a couple of days back, and in this video, we're going to take a look at that particular release and kind of um, show you what is new in the language. But first, let's talk a little bit about Hacks from a game developer's perspective. And the actual guy, the main lead on the development team for Hacks itself, uses Hacks for game development. So you know game dev is a very important aspect of Hacks. And there are a number of ship titles that you have probably heard of that have been made using Hacks. Here we are on their... Um their showcase page, and you see titles. We've got Northgard, Dead Cells, Papers, Please, uh, Defender's Quest, Evil Land, 1 and 2, and so on. So there are a number of quite successful games out there. There are also a number of game engines and frameworks that we will check out after we get through what is new in the 4.0 release. Now, Hacks is a kind of a special language in that it targets other languages. So Hacks is capable of um, creating C++, C Sharp, Java, uh, JavaScript, etc. code. On top of that, it can target a number of different runtimes, a number of different platforms. It's also available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So it's a very portable programming language. And with the Hacks 4.0 release, this is continuing what I call the language convergence. I'm finding all of the major programming languages, Java, C Sharp, um, sort of C++, uh, Hacks, um, Swift, you name it, all these newer languages are kind of converging on a a basic set of syntax and, and functionality. And you're seeing a lot of the functionality that was missing from that common language Gisalt when it comes to hacks have been added in the 4.0 release. So let's take a quick look at what the top level new descriptions are, and then we'll get into a couple of the details and examples. So this is available at hacks.org. Once again, it is available for all your major platforms. Um, but we're going to look here at the new features of 4.0. So we get a new function type syntax. It is currently optional, but it is better. We will see it in just a few seconds. Arrow function syntax. So if you all you people that like your inline Lambda functions, uh, Hacks has them now. A final keyword. That is definitely something that the language was missing. This is your way of making sealed classes or um, immutable variables. Uh, newer and faster Hacks built-in interpreter. Unicode support for all targets. Uh, key value iterators. Automatic using, using for types. We'll see that in action in a second. IDE services protocol for better IDE support. A new runtime, Hashlink, a successor to the Nico runtime, and much more. So if you click on any of these things, and by the way, the link will be down below, but we can get to a little bit more of a breakdown, and we're not going to go through all of them, but we'll look at some of the new things that are coming in. So first off, we have the new uh, type syntax, uh, specifically for function types, now with clear separation of arguments from the return type with support for argument names, which is very helpful for code self-documentation, and better IDE support. So there's a function with no arguments, a single argument, a multiple, also an alt, um, an optional argument, and then a, and a return type, uh, unnamed arguments, and a return type, and mixed arguments with a return type. So this new syntax is definitely cleaner, in my humble opinion. Uh, the old syntax is still supported, but the new one is preferable. And again, this, if you've looked at any of the newer languages like uh, Kotlin, um, Swift, etc., this is going to look awfully familiar to you. Um, now, next up, we have the arrow function syntax. Now, this is, again, for those inline functions that you just kind of want to throw in. Um, so here you see the arrow basically saying in this call, this method in line. So it's the equivalent of writing out this code, but obviously it is quite a bit shorter. Now, arrow functions are kind of almost universal at this point. So it is nice to see hacks getting support for arrow functions. Um, next up, we have null safety and experimental opt-in. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave over that one for now. Final, final is definitely cool. Uh, this gives you the ability to make um, consts, basically. So the the value of A cannot be changed after it was assigned here. Um, this function cannot be overridden. Or we have uh, classes you can be tagged as final, and they cannot be extended. Now, I don't know why you would create a, an interface that... I suppose, yeah, no, no, that does make sense. Never mind. Um, we have eval, the hacks built-in interpreter was rewritten from scratch and now is known as eval. It is much faster and more robust than the old one, meaning the macro and script execution just got faster. Uh, besides speed, eval target has support for interactive debugging, currently available in our Visual Studio Code hacks extension. Hacks link, that is the new runtime mentioned before. Hacks goes with hash link, uh, the new high-performance runtime developed specifically for hacks, featuring bytecode plus JIT or just-in-time 
runtime compilation and C output. Uh, simple C interop and access to low level numeric types and pointers. That simple C interop is kind of nice. A lot of the uh, C and C++ libraries out there you will find export in C format. Uh, and actually so do a lot of uh, other programming languages just to maintain that interoperability. So uh, that should be nice. Uh, call site inlining it is now possible to inline function calls in inlineable class um, instantiations by specifying inline keyword before call slash new expressions. Um, key value iterators, uh, inline markup, and there's one more that I'm looking at here. Oh yeah, auto using types for types uh, is now possible to enable static extensions for a type at the types declaration place like here. So as you need it, you can use the, um, the using uh, right where you need it. Uh, so that's definitely going to make for some cleaner code to a certain degree. And we've got a number of other features here. We're just basically glossing over them there because we're kind of getting into the weeds at this point in time. But there are some definitely nice uh, improvements to the language there. I know a lot of people are definitely going to like to see uh, the new function syntax for sure and the new arrow functions. Those two are, are huge uh, for people coming from other languages especially. Once you get used to doing arrow syntax, it's hard not to go back. Like Especially when you're dealing with a lot of callback functions, you going to get used to arrow syntax and once you go to a language that doesn't have it it gets a little frustrating so that is it the final functionality should also be very nice this should just make it so you can write more clean self-documenting um, you know maintainable code a lot of these improvements and on top of that we've got the new uh, runtime should hopefully make things faster and so on now I mentioned earlier in the video I was going to talk about some of the game development libraries and frameworks that are out there now the cool thing is I've actually already done it so over on game from scratch I will link this with the other link down below um, I did a list of hacks game engines that are out there so we've got some low-level stuff and like such as enemy and lime um, we got intermediate stuff such as Ka and OpenFL. OpenFL was designed around being a replacement for the whole Flash API and was one of the most popular frameworks out there. We got some higher level 2D frameworks like Hacked Flixel, uh, Hacked Punk, and Stencil. Um, and then we've got the highest level 3D stuff um, with Away 3D Heaps and the Armory 3D Game Engine. Now Heaps is actually what was used for a lot of those games I mentioned earlier on. This is maintained by the same guy that maintains the programming language itself. It was used for Dead Cells, Northgard, and other games, Evo Land. Um, so definitely one worth checking out. Now if you want to check out any of these, you'll notice a Learn More link here. But the key ones to point out, I did a... Um, a tutorial on Armory Engine shortly after it was released. Uh, they've got a bit silent on new releases, which is why you haven't heard a whole lot here um, on Armory updates. It's still under development. It just seems like the developer's focusing more on Armor Paint than he is on the Armory Engine. So there's new versions coming out, but he's not documenting what's new in them. So it's making it pretty much impossible for me to do any kind of a reporting on improvements to Armory 3D. So yes, Armory 3D is still being improved. It's just the way it's being improved aren't being reported, so I, I can't report on it. So Sorry about that. But anyways, if you want to check out Armory 3D, it's a very cool game engine. It uses the Hacks programming language inside of Blender. So you use Blender for your content creation, your level creation, and it is your project hub. And then your code is in the Hacks programming language. It's a very cool concept. And as you can see, I did a very multi-part tutorial series on working with the Armory 3D, including videos for all of those formats. I also did a full Hacks Flixel tutorial series covering the basics, things like getting started, hello world, sprites, keyboard input, mouse input, camera, sprite, um, animation, sound, and music, um, and also did a video a series on that as well. So if you want to check out Hacks Flixel, I got you set there. And then finally, Hacks and Heaps, the other one I mentioned earlier, I did a, um, a multi-part tutorial on it, no fancy homepage for it, just basically different chunks of the tutorial that show you the basics of creating a game, uh, handling input, and um, drawing graphics kind of thing that'll at least get you started with heaps if that is of interest to you so um yeah definitely a big development in the world of hacks uh definitely some nice stuff in this release if you are interested once again hacks is available at hacks.org it's a very interesting language if you've never checked it out especially because as i said it supports javascript c plus plus c sharp java jvm python lua php flash um, and also has its own runtimes in the form of Hashlink and then Nico NV, which is kind of being uh, replaced, and can also be run in interpreted mode. So there is a remarkable amount of uh, 
language portability when it comes to hacks and given that hacks is on every major platform and for my channel specifically with the game development interest the fact that the guy developing this programming language is developing it to use in his own games you know it is a game development appropriate programming language for sure and as you saw the 4.0 features just bring a maturity to the language new features and functions that just kind of improve every programmer's life so if you have never checked out hacks in the past this is definitely a good time to do so so go grab Hacks 4.0 in Visual Studio Code and then one of these frameworks and just start playing around. You'll find it's it's a pleasant experience. And since it's so similar in some ways to many programming languages, if you have some background in um, you know, C Sharp or Swift or um, ECMA script or, or Flash, you're going to be almost immediately comfortable using hacks. Like I said, all these programming languages seem to be kind of converging on a common syntax. Let me know if you find that um, that as well. If you agree with my, we're moving towards the one true language kind of approach where we're all gonna have mostly the same syntax except for, for uh, very dedicated or niche programming languages or things that use a completely different model uh, or idiom for, for coding. We do seem to be kind of moving towards this convergence point. I'd be interested if you share that opinion. All right. Anyways, that's Hacks 4.0. Very, very cool release. And uh, yeah, talk to you all later. Goodbye.